So welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at new builds. We're looking at new construction. So if you've been trying to get new construction leads, new leads, um, new build leads, new home leads, whatever you want to call it, this is absolutely the video for you. Now I'm going to approach it given that the, given the topic, I'm going to approach it from a real estate agent perspective. However, with that being said, if you're a builder, you can benefit from these strategies as well. It just it just so happens that you won't be a real estate agent. Um, you're just going to be more of the builder. So the lens that I'm approaching this from is as a real estate agent because that's what I am, and that's what primarily that's who I primarily help with this channel. So don't be offended, builders. I work with many of you already, so know that these strategies you you know you see those in action already because you're paying my company to generate new construction leads for you already but again we're looking at this through a real estate agent lens so that is up that's what's up so just giving you um just giving you a heads up there so again we're looking at residential construction leads or residential uh home well that's what residential means so new bill leads new construction leads um, new home leads, whatever you want to call them, that's what we're looking at today. Now, what's important to understand as a real estate agent is multiple things. Whenever we're looking at new construction leads or new build leads, we need to understand where the product is coming from and who the builders are. There's several different types of builders out there. There is fully custom builders, meaning that they will build out the entire thing on spec. So meaning that they will actually design it out based off of your um, your preference. So that's a full customized solution, if you will. So a fully customized um, home. And then there's also builders that do semi-custom. Well, they'll have general plans already laid out. And then you can do some changes as, um, as it pertains to the home. But you're not going to get the full... Um, you get to design the color, you get to design the fixtures, you get to design the floor plans, you get to the de design the material, you get to design X, Y, and Z. The, that's not what you're going to have. And then another type of and another type of builder is the inventory builder, where they are just going on mass. It really doesn't matter what you choose. This is what we have available to you. This is a floor plan. This is a color. This is the material. This is the X, Y, and Z. If you like it, great. If not, get out of here. Now. I know it sounds a little bit callous, but really that's what happens. So with inventory homes, there's not much that you can change. There may be, there's an elevation. So the front of the house, you could you can change that most of the time. You can select between certain colors in some cases, but don't expect much customization. So you have the full custom builders, then you have a semi-custom builder, and then you have an inventory builder out there. So primarily those are three types of builders out there. Now I share that to provide some additional information that you generally don't know, especially as an agent or also more specifically as a new agent, because you might not have sold a new construction home in your life. So that is completely okay. So that's generally what you're gonna see out there. And on top of that, just to go into some different categories, you have small builders, medium builders, and large builders. And when I mean, what I mean by that is, with small builders, they generally don't put too many homes on the ground. And it's, it doesn't mean that they are custom builders, semi-custom builders, or inventory builders. It just means that they are a smaller builder, that they have a set amount of crew and also a set amount of capital, that they're not putting a ton of homes on the ground. So small builders, there's really not a distinct category on where, where that falls. I consider a small builder anybody that puts less than 10 homes um, on the ground a year. It's a general, generally a smaller builder, a local builder that they haven't expanded into other areas. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You have, if you go based off of the definition that I have of less than 10 homes on the ground, there's plenty of fully custom builders that make millions and millions of dollars in the three to five homes that they put down a year. And I mean, that's just being conservative. So don't, um, I'm not necessarily saying this to disparage. I'm trying to categorize this between medium, uh, small, medium, and large, so we can approach the strategies that we're going to share today the way that they should be. So really, just setting the foundation, setting the groundwork, 
And as you're coming in, a like is gonna go a long way. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. Happy to happy to address them. This is a, a meaty subject, so I'm gonna do a very, very detailed approach on on this. So just making sure that I, I address the questions that are coming up. Let me make sure I have this screen up here as well. All right, so again, we're talking about new construction. Medium builders. Medium builders, what I consider is medium builders can get into the hundreds of homes a, a year. So putting hundreds of homes on the ground, that's what I consider medium builders. But really, it can be any anything from 20 to 100 homes. That's what you can consider medium builders. There's no actual, there's no actual definition of what's categorized as a medium builder. I'm talking about just volume. And then large builders, those get into the thousands. Those large builders, you can consider those the, forgetting to turn my phone off. <laughs> um, Joseph, I was just thinking about new construction marketing yesterday. Good topic. Yo, well, right on cue. Appreciate you, Joseph. As I don't know how to say your last name. Esliat, Esliat, Esliat. Sorry, I butchered it. But awesome. So you have new construction. Let me know if you have any questions about it. It's a very fruitful, fruitful niche to be in, especially because the lack of competition right now. So when it comes to large builders, these are your DR Hortons, these are your Toll Brothers, these are your KB Homes, these are your national builders that are just massive. These are your builders that are putting down thousands of homes in multiple states, multiple countries in many cases. So these large behemoth builders, these are generally more national. The medium ones are more regional, so you may have heard of certain homes like, um, I think Megatel is more of a Texas-based builder. I don't necessarily know how wide their reach is, but it's more of a regional. The mediums are typically more regional builders that may be in multiple counties, may be in multiple states, but don't have that national presence. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just we're trying to categorize as we get going so we know how to approach these types of builders. Now, with that being said, every builder treats a real estate agent different. So I repeat that again, every builder treats a real estate agent different. So what that means is there are certain requirements as a real estate agent that you need to fulfill in order to get paid by the builder. Some builders require you to be present while your client is going to that new construction site. And in order for you to get paid, you have to be physically present with your client. Some uh, builders will allow you to call ahead so your client can go without you physically there. So when they sign in, that's what all builders are going to require. When they sign in, they can, um, they can put you down as the real estate agent and you as a real estate agent get not only credit for the transaction, but you're able to represent the client in the negotiation and all that fun stuff. So again, there's just so many different ways that builders treat agents when it comes to the commission, when it comes to requirements, when it comes to responsibilities. And a lot of that has to do with the size of the builder. So when we're talking about small builders, chances are that small builders that don't put too many homes on the ground a year, they are actually gonna be represented by a real estate agent. So in this case, you're gonna have a real estate agent from Century 21, Remax, um, um, Discount Brokerages, EXP Realty, Keller Williams, any, any brokers that you can think of, chances are that there's a real estate agent representing a smaller builder because a builder wants to focus on building the home and then they'll just put the listing off on a on a broker so they can put it on the MLS so they can market it, they can do the showings and all that fun stuff. So there are builders that will keep it in house at the small level. So when they're small, uh, when they're a small builder, they will keep it in house. But generally with small builders, they'll usually get a broker involved so they can market that property for them. And just as a little heads up, it's generally a family member. <laughs> so just giving you, just giving you the ins and outs. So this is stuff that um, I've learned through um, through my experience and through speaking to a ton of builders and through speaking through a lot of real estate agents that I work with. So just giving you the ins and outs. Just as much as um, I do consider myself a new construction specialist because I've worked from all sides of the all sides of the new construction. So I've, I'm working from the builder's perspective where I'm actually doing the marketing for the builders. So in that case, 
These are the builders trying to get directly to the clients. Sorry, real estate agents, but I also teach real estate agents how to get new build leads so they can represent the buyer and also in rare occasions represent the seller. So any question that comes up, please feel free to drop it down in the chat. So that's what we're talking about from a, so when as a real estate agent, you can represent the buying side and you can also represent the listing side. Now, like I just mentioned on new, on smaller, uh, smaller builders, that's really where the opportunity to represent people from the listing side comes into play as a real estate agent. When you come, when you go to, into a medium or large builder, chances are they have somebody on staff that is that is um doing their sales so generally with medium builders or larger builders they'll actually have a model home that their their personnel actually uh, actually attends actually mans the table there so you'll have some new home sales reps that some of them have a real estate license many of them do not they work for the builder so they're the ones that are doing the entire quarterbacking of the transaction so there you're negotiating against the builder um indirectly through their through their sales staff which um there's there's benefits and then there's cons to that but just understand kind of who the other individual is going to be that you're speaking with directly so that's those are some of the nuances so if you're looking to get into the listing side from a builder perspective you're going to ha have more success from a smaller builder so a builder that doesn't put too many homes on the ground because they actually are looking for you they actually are looking for a broker to represent them on the sales now i was kind of half joking and also being completely serious when i say that whenever a small builder gets another broker involved it typically is a family member it just happens to be that way so getting into the listing side of the equation from a new build perspective is considerably difficult so i'm not trying to sugarcoat anything it's not impossible but it is difficult now how you get into the listing side the most effective way to do that is to start selling their homes that's the most effective way to do that because with these relationships that they have with their family members or the relationships that these builders have with their with their brokers they they can get old they can get uh tired some some people can get complacent so if i had a builder as an example a local builder that sells that builds five homes every single year i can count on those five homes every single year those five listings and i don't necessarily have to work too hard for that for that business any longer and that's what happens with time so that's why you'll have historically you're going to have people the brokers hold the account for a new builder for several years and then the builder you know kind of goes and looks for another agent the reason being is because people can get complacent so if you're looking for an opportunity of working with builders in a serious way then your your best bet is looking for local builders and your best bet is selling their houses as much as possible from the buying side so you representing and bringing them a buyer because the builder is going to see your name good sign because at that point you are bringing value to the builder without even being on the listing side so it's a long way it's a long way to build a relationship it's not a short-term solution it is a long-term um a long-term solution but that's really the most effective way that you can get in with these small builders because of those relationships that i just mentioned so you can the most effective way to get in with the builder is to sell their product as much as possible from the selling side, so from the buying side. So that's the only thing that we're gonna cover from the listing side, because again, from a listing side, so you getting in with the builder, that's um, that's not very likely unless you're working with a small builder, have the relationships and all that stuff. So I wanna appeal to the most amount of agents here that can benefit from our strategy. So we're gonna cover three strategies today that will actually work for your business. And some of these can tacitly cover the listing side, but we're fo solely focused on the buying side here moving out. So again, this is more for real estate agents, new construction folks, so new builders out there. I absolutely appreciate you. I ap appreciate you working with me um, and my company and generating you business, but we are focused on real estate agents on this channel. 
questions coming over on Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. I love talking new construction. I just don't get to do it too often because people are not, um, agents are not really, are not really as, um, as trusting into new build as they should be because I don't know why. It's, it's still underserved. What are the benefits of using a realtor when helping a, a buyer purchase new construction versus just going directly with the builder? So that's a great question. The great analogy that I like to that I I like to give, or one of the talking points that I like to give whenever I when that question does come up directly from a buyer, um, I would generally start off asking, "Well, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, have you ever have you ever been through a divorce?" And that'll generally throw them back, like, "You're a realtor. What the hell is your problem?" <laughs> it's like, uh, "No." Awesome, awesome. Well, no, congratulations. Sorry to bring up such a, you know, such a dark topic, if you will. I know that historically 50% of the marriages end up in divorce, so I'm very glad that you're on the right side of that 50%. Now, let me ask you this. If you were to go, I'm not trying to speak it into being Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, but if you were to go into a divorce, would you use your spouse's, um, your husband, your wife's attorney to represent you in the divorce? A hundred percent of the time, the answer is no. <laughs> so that's the same thing that I share with them. So when it comes to the benefits, that's really where I start off. That's really where I start off in the whole, um, when that question comes up from a buyer's perspective that, hey, why do I need a realtor? I can go directly to the builder. Well, if you go directly to the builder, then who is your advocate? Who is the one that's gonna help you in the negotiation who's the one that has experience with the builder that does this every single day who's going to be the one that handles this large transaction for you for all you know you could have gotten more credits for all you know you could have gotten those upgrades for all you know you could have gotten a better loan for all you know the builder could be completely lying to you and all that fun stuff now where that question comes in and let me know joseph if that was if that benefited or helped you in any way but that's generally the line that um, I typically diffuse that question with and then go into what could happen. Because there are cases where with enough, uh, with enough transactions with the same builder, you yourself can get more commission. So just um, uh, talking about commission for a quick second, just so you know, with new construction, you can generally expect a higher commission, generally. Now it's gonna depend builder by builder. There are some builders that do a 2% more, no less. Um, There's some builders that do 1%, 1.5%, all that fun stuff. There are some builders out there that will do what's called three plus one, three plus two, three plus three. I've seen three plus four, meaning 3% plus a bonus. So there are some houses that I have purchased myself and also with clients that I've gotten 6% commission on. So it was a three, three, plus, uh, three plus three bonus. So what that means is, again, 3% for the actual commission plus a bonus if you get under contract within a certain amount of days. So with, and you're generally gonna find this with larger builders. So the, the are horns of the world, though they are notorious for doing this in a good way, where they do so much volume that they need people into their, um, into their builds before it actually gets completed. So they want those homes sold as quickly as possible because here you're talking about multiple hundreds of homes being built at the same time. So they want to, the moment that that home gets completed and inspected, they need somebody in there because at that point, the they've been taxed from a um, non-improvement on the land perspective, meaning they've been taxed on the land's value as opposed to being taxed on the land plus the improvement, meaning the actual structure, the actual home. So then their tax bill just went up. Also, they have a holding cost. They are not financing the entire labor, the entire building, the, enti uh, the building material cost. They're not, they're not, um, they're not financing everything at, from their cash. They're financing it through a bank. And it's typically the bank that they get their clients to use as, um, as their preferred lender. I'm going into so many different intricacies. So hopefully this is making sense. If you have any questions, again, I love new construction, but I can get into the to the weeds very, very quickly. And I should probably I should probably keep going because we need to get into the strategies. 
great analogy and explanations. Do builders typically budget realtor commissions when they price the home 100%? That's already a sunk cost. Now, there are shady builders out there. Do not get me wrong, but shady builders have a great way of marketing their way out of business, meaning that the, if you cut a realtor out of the commission enough times, you're going to find that realtors will stop using that builder. <laughs> so stop referring clients to that builder because if you fool me once, I don't even need, I don't even know the what what is it? If you fool me once, uh, fool, me, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you. It could be vice versa, I don't know. But that's what we're that's what we're talking about. So with new construction, yes, it's factored in. Of course there's going to be shady actors out there, there's going to be shady builders out there. Um, so we can't really account for those. It's just, um, it just happens. But also keep in mind that with most builders, 80% plus are sold from a realtor bringing in a client. So meaning that it's not a good idea to cut out this real estate agent, especially in this hot, hot market right now, because right now you may be thinking, hell, I can put any sign out there and this house is gonna sell. However, when the market turns, you're gonna need a realtor. And again, over 80% of the homes that um, are sold like a new construction are sold by real estate agents. So it's a real estate agent bringing in a client. So just keep that in mind. New construction is becoming easier for agents and buyers. Buyers can show themselves homes now by registering online. Many clients call me while out with builders to add me on the contracts. Yeah, there are cases. Uh, let me know where, um, let me know where you're practicing from. I, um, I know you do a lot of new new homes, so I really would love some additional perspective. Thank you. All right, so number one, one strategy is we gotta get into, I have a, a meeting in 15, so I really gotta get into the strategy. Strategy number one is open houses. Open houses are a fantastic way for you to generate a ton of interest, not only in the home itself, but also for you to get some buyer leads that, keep in mind, you simply because they came to an open house that you hosted at a, let's just call it Riverside community, if you will. So you just uh, did an open house on one of the floor plans or one of the homes that just has not been able to sell. You do an open house there, you are collecting the leads. No different than the open houses that you would do with resales. But the beauty of this is you get to show a home in its most immaculate state. You get to show a home that has all the ins and outs that typically has the latest technology that is typically furnished and you get the benefit of just showing a house in its most pristine state. That is incredible. So what we need to recognize is that with this open house, it's gonna be very rare that you actually sell that home. That's okay. The one up that you have over resales, so doing resale open houses is that you can help these individuals that go to this new build community, not only to try to buy that home, but also any type of home that they want because really you're working with the builder and depends if it's a small, medium, or large, but generally you're able to help them into another floor plan. You didn't like this floor plan? Awesome. Well, let's um let's check out this this um the palm plan or or the the palm floor plan. Let's see if you like this. Is this better? Awesome. Well, I think that they have a new uh, uh, and it's about it's on phase eight, so we'll be able to at least see the structure of it. Let's go and check that out, right? So you're able to show them another home within that community. You can also show them another community. It doesn't even have to be that builder or you can show them resales. So here you get the benefits of all the worlds. You get the benefits of showing a brand new spanking home. DMV, I like it. DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Thanks for dropping by. And um, I love the channel name. The So the open house strategies, Builders that are a small builder, a medium builder, and a large builder will generally let you do that. So again, it doesn't matter if it's a small builder that does less than 10 homes a year. It doesn't matter if it's a more of a regional builder or a medium builder or a large builder that does thousands of homes nationally. You generally are able to do an open house. You just need to get with the appropriate contacts in order to set that up. And then you just market it the same way. So that's how you start generating some new construction leads, some new builds, because if somebody is there at a new construction, at a new build, at a new community, they are they are interested in a new build. Uh, and generally, and I have to generalize here, 
generally people that buy new are generally a second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth time homeowner. They're not new. Um, they're not first time homeowners. Generally, <laughs> generally, I have to really emphasize that. So whenever somebody thinks I need to buy a house, they're looking more for things that are already in place or resales. And sometimes you're going to find that real estate agents, they actually don't even show new build, new build altogether because they don't understand the new construction process. They don't, they don't trust the builder that they're going to pay them. It's been a lot of funny business between realtor and builders in the past that leads to that strategy of real estate agents not showing new builds. Don't want to get into that too much. I think you've kind of, you're able to fill in the blanks already. So that's one of the, one of the best ways that you can generate a ton of leads for yourself. One of the best ways, one of the best ways for you to start selling these homes, which again, on the buying side, many of these builders are offering that the 3% that you're looking for. Many of them are offering three plus one, three plus two, three plus three. It's a great, um, it's a great incentive program and some of the larger builders will actually put you into their rewards program where you sell enough homes you get a upgraded tier so if you sell i, I know dr horton i believe it was if you sell five homes and this is this was last year i think if you sell five homes you're locked in at five percent or something like that i forget what the exact numbers are if you sell five homes of their homes a year you get locked in at a certain tier so you get a lot more benefit than actually working and manning the table there. It's a, it's very, very rewarding financially and also helping people, of course, let's not forget that, but that sizable check doesn't hurt, right? So strategy one, open houses. Strategy number two is leveraging Facebook marketplace and leveraging Craigslist. So here the strategy is identifying a new build community that has floor plans that are available and getting a hold of those those floor plans and some photos and then posting them on Facebook Marketplace and on Craigslist. So here, effectively what you're doing is very similar to what I call the just listed strategy or the price drop strategy where you're marketing a listing on Marketplace for absolutely free. Here you're marketing it on Marketplace for free as well. Now. The common courtesy thing to do is to ask the builder for permission to market the property. That's the common courtesy. So some of you are gonna fall along the lines of ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Some of you are gonna fall on the line of ask for permission versus, um, what is it? I, I am failing these analogies today. As you can see, I, I continue to just drink coffee because <laughs> I'm trying to trying to keep it together. It's gonna bug me. Ask for permission. If you know it, let me know in the chat because I'm I'm falling flat. So Facebook Marketplace is a great way exposure. It's a great way to get a lot of people through the door and reaching out to you in the DMs. So I do have a Facebook Marketplace video that if you go to the channel and go to videos and you type in Facebook Marketplace, I share with you the exact screen share on what to post, how to post it, and how to follow up. So I'm just gonna leave that as homework for you. I just wanna introduce you to the various ways for you to get into new builds. So you to get new home leads, new construction. So residential is very powerful. Strategy number three is actually a Facebook ad. So I wanna show you the actual ad that you can run to generate some leads. And as I say that, I'm gonna share with you a very cool backdrop that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Here we go. So this is the new construction ad that you can run in your market. Now, again, this has to do a lot with if it's a small, medium or large builder. Large builders are generally going to have some additional perks, some incentives. Medium builders, same thing. Smaller builders, not as much. With smaller builders, you have to get more creative. Are you gonna include appliances? Are you going to help with certain closing costs? Are you gonna do X, Y, and Z? There's really not a set way that builders um, that builders will, um, will uh, what do you call it? With small builders, there's not a set way that they'll compensate you from a bonus perspective or compensate the buyers. So there you just have to get creative and that's where you have to really work in on your negotiation skills because that's what it's, 
calls for. So this is the entire ad copy. You're, what you're looking for is some additional perks and highlight the benefits of buying new because a lot of purchasers do not know the benefits. So if you're looking to launch ads, this is the exact ad copy. If you're looking for additional ad copies, then I'll link this down below as well. So I have templates for buyer leads, which includes new construction leads. Um, so in addition, this is one, and then I have, I believe two or three additional uh, templates on the buyer ones. So you're gonna wanna check that out. And I'll le leave this link down below so you can check out the check out the templates that are included. But as you can see that there's been some pretty good returns on investment. I'll let you check that out at your leisure. But this is a way for you to get access to more ad copies. This is the absolutely free one. If you want this and without having to type it out on your own and want the additional follow-up strategy behind that. So I detail out what to send, when to send it, and all the pro tips on what actually gets you conversion. So one of the questions that came up from Joseph was what are the benefits of working with the real estate agent versus going directly with the builder? Well, I talk a little bit about that in the complete follow-up and some strategies that wire and the, and the, and the builder because that's where you need to be you need to be the advocate for your client because we know that a client going unrepresented to a buyer may not have the builder's best interest in fact we know that that's not the case because um everyone's responsible for their own person and the builder is responsible for the builder not necessarily as responsible for the seller uh, the buyer so those are three ways that you absolutely want to market and these are some very succinct ways for you to generate some new construction leads some new buyer leads now many of you have been asking about agently and the templates so agently is a software company that i'm co-founders and co-owners in and um we are adding a new construction um ad copy to it so it's going to look similar to what you saw on the screen but we're <laughs> we're testing out so many different things right now it's going to absolutely blow it up. So if you are interested in Agently, I'll link that down below as well. But Agently, again, it launches your ads for you. So you may be able to launch Facebook ads manually yourself right now. Awesome, great job. And um, I hope that this video has helped you do that or the, um, the channel has helped you do that. But also Agently is able to generate Facebook ads and seller ads for you with the click of a button. So if you have any questions, I'll link it down below and also know that we do not have new construction right now, but we are adding it. And um, depending on when you watch it, it's probably there right now. But without, with, with that being said, I appreciate you hopping on. If you have any questions, I, um, please feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. It's gonna send out the notifications to the rest of us that, um, that we are live whenever we are. If I can be of any service down the road, don't forget to reach out. Thanks. Bye.